Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Vigito Studio. And today I'm gonna to share with you how to create that liquid poster typography effect. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now we're on the edit page and we're gonna start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. Now we can move over to the Fusion page. Once in Fusion, the first thing we want to do is bringing a background that's gonna serve as a null background. We're gonna reduce the alpha channel down to zero and we're gonna link the output of that background to the media out. Then we're gonna bring our first text and we're gonna link the output of that text to the background one. In this text node, you can write whatever you want. In my case, I'm gonna write DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna change the font for basement grotesque. I'm gonna increase the size and I'm gonna relocate the text at the top of my viewer right there. Now I'm gonna copy that first text and I'm gonna paste it so it retains the same uh, font property that we just inputted. I'm gonna link the output of that second text to the merge tool to bring it in the composition and we're gonna change the text here for tutorial, for example. I'm gonna move tutorial down. I'm gonna increase the size considerably like that and then i'm just gonna move that text to the size basically you're free to do whatever layout uh, you like in my case i'm just gonna randomly put a bunch of word but feel free to add any information you like then i'm gonna go over to shading and i just want to create some visual contrast between the different texts so instead of having the fill we're gonna switch for outline so we have different looks going on so here i'm just gonna reduce a tiny bit the thickness to one maybe 0.01 I'm happy with that. Then I'm just gonna paste my text again and link the output of the text again to the merge too. And we're basically gonna continue the same process until we fill the screen with all the information that we want. All right, so now I have my screen filled up with text. I'm just gonna create a background behind that text. So I'm gonna bring a new background and then I'm gonna unlink the merge to the media out and I'm gonna link instead it to the background and create here a new merge link the output of that merge to the media out and here we go we have a background now i'm just going to change the color of that background i'm going to go with uh, some dark gray and then here to add some texture to that background i'm going to add some grain so i'm going to select my background it shift space on my keyboard and then we're going to search for grain and we're going to bring that in i personally like to add some grain but some people might prefer to keep it smooth so it's just a matter of preference as you want me i'm adding some so now we've pretty much all layout, but we have no animation. The first animation that I want to create is that liquid or kind of flag animation where the text is a bit distorted and is moving. To do that, we're gonna use a drip node. So I'm gonna select my merge and I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm gonna add a drip node and bring that in. Drip node is a pretty interesting node if you want to uh, deform some shape or deform some text. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. Here, as you can see, you have a bunch of different options between a circle, square, random. It could be very interesting for some glitchy text. Uh, I will soon do a video about it. Uh, here, for example, you have also vertical. That can be interesting to create some flags. There is a lot you can do with it, so I'll just let you play around with that. For now, we're just gonna use circular. And basically the pattern is like a drop of water dripping into a pound of water and it just creates some sort of ripple effect that you can increase here with the amplitude with the dampening and with the frequency so they're gonna create the look of your text in our case we're gonna go really low with all of those so we can still read the text so here in my case i'm just gonna reduce by a lot the frequency so we're gonna put the frequency at two and then depending on how much distortion I uh, will want to add, we're gonna play later with the amplitude. But first, I'm just gonna create a loop animation to see already how it looks like. To create an animation, I'm not gonna use curves, I'm not gonna use keyframes, but I'm gonna use expression. Cause for stuff like that, it's way easier in my opinion to just set up an expression and forget it. So right now we're gonna set up an expression on the face. As you can see, it just like animate that drip. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna right click on the phase, go to expression, and then here I'm gonna write time asterisk 0 0.01. And what we just wrote basically is that when there is one frame passing through, the phase is gonna increase by 0 0.01. So here, as you can see, we're at frame zero right now. If I move to frame one, it's 0 0.01, then 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and so on. And that way, we're just creating that animation. If you want it to be quicker, you could here switch that for 
0.002 and then instead of having each frame being 001 that would be 002 which will be twice quicker so that's just one way to create those loop animation in my case i'm just gonna stick to 001 and as you can see it just gives us more visibility on what we're actually doing and now we can start to play with some parameter to get really the look that we want so here a first one could be the amplitude if you want to have more distortion you could just increase here the amplitude and you will get more distort text and another one that will greatly affect the distortion is the position of that drip so right now the center is on the text so the distortion is not too hard on the edges but here if we were to just bring that center position to a corner as you can see the drip basically going to be in the middle of the text and now we're going to have bigger distortion so that could be an effect that you wish but one thing that you have to consider is that your text may just reach out of frame so then you might need to just readjust the position of the other text or just uh, you know find the right balance between the position of the drip and the position of your text or you just don't care and you want something that is fully distorted that can just be a look as well in my case i'm gonna go in between and i'm just gonna drag it here relatively at the bottom on the right and just see how it looks i'm pretty happy with that i think it's nice now i'm gonna add some glow and rgb split to make it look nicer so i'm gonna select my drip it shift space on my keyboard bring a glow node and bring that in here i'm just gonna reduce the glow because i don't want it to be too much so about 0.6 seems to be fine i'm gonna bring that glow right there and now the second thing that i'm gonna bring is gonna be a chromatic aberration so i'm gonna go to template and then here i'm gonna search for aberration and bring the chromatic aberration in i'm gonna unlink here the glow and I'm going to link it to the chromatic aberration instead and link the output of the chromatic aberration to the merge. It's quite subtle, I'm happy with that, but if you want to increase the chromatic aberration, you can do that right there. And you can also adjust the position of that chromatic aberration. Right now, I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to reset the position and reset the strength of the effect. And I'm just going to make one last animation, which is going to be basically a rolling text effect where we're going to make the text scroll. So to do that, I'm going to select here my chromatic aberration, hit shift space on my keyboard and search for a transform node. I'm going to bring that in. Then here in transform, I'm going to switch from canvas to wrap. And as you can see, if we adjusting the position of that text, we can basically make the text scroll. So we're going to animate that using an expression again, but we cannot do it directly right here. We're going to need to right click on center and first modify with X, Y path. So we have only one value to modify. It prompt open here the modifier and now we have access to the X position and the Y position, but only with one value. I'm just going to remove the keyframe that I've been put right there. Here I'm going to right click on my Y and I'm going to select expression and we're going to write the exact same thing we wrote before, time, asterisk 0 0.01. Right now we have an animation going from bottom to top. I want the opposite. I want from top to bottom. So we're going to change the value here from 0 0.01 to minus 0 0.01 and now we have the opposite where the text is just scrolling from top to bottom and then the last thing i'll be doing is adjusting here the perspective so i'm going to select the transform each space on my keyboard and then bring a dve node and bring that in and now i can just adjust the x position the y position and the z position and get uh, the look that i want in terms of perspective and that's pretty much it that's my final result now you can always go back and play around with the different parameter that we just created to really tune in and have the look that you want thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next and see you in the next one bye speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website including titles transition and templates built only for davinci resolve Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.